crab water. It's so dry oh. out here. Like, well, I'm just going to ask about, because I heard you talking to Jeff about the altitude. Yeah, yeah. Ben mentioned it yesterday as well. Has that been an issue? Definitely in the in the finals because you got to take eight runs and it's like back to back to back and you don't really get that much time to recover in between runs. In practice, it's easy to like break up your run in different segments and you can work on like you know your segments and then you're like, oh, I got this half of the run run down, this other half, and you don't get too too tired. But in the finals, you got to take eight full runs. So you're like. Ugh. Yeah, and then, like, if people fall in between your run, if everyone makes their run, then you get a little bit more time until the, the order goes around. But but if you get one run where, like, everyone falls, then you're right back on. So it's I definitely feel a big difference in between, like, skating here in Salt Lake with a dry climate and the altitude versus, like, sea level. But one thing is we're indoors. The ramp's on concrete. It feels really solid and fast compared to Ocean City where the ramp was like, built on the beach, you know, and it, it felt really like it wasn't as like solid. You can feel a big, big difference on, you know, the ramps set up in like an arena where it's so perfect versus like the beach or the grass and stuff. Getting some comfort level to get that good run at night. Before. Oh, for sure. You know, when the ramp is solid and feels good, it gives you good comfort to try some harder tricks. So there's always different elements you have to work with, you know, depending on where you're, you're competing. Even if it's the same ramp. You know, like Ocean City, ramp wasn't perfect because it's on the beach here. Your altitude's a little bit more tiring. And in Vegas, we're poolside in Vegas. The ramp's set up on some stage on top of the pool. So that, too, sometimes the ramp gets a little bit shaky. So you just got to be really good at, like, adapting. And then, um, you know, one thing that's good is if back home, you don't always skate, like, a perfect ramp. Because if you practice on something that's not so perfect and you're used to to dealing with like elements like that, you know? If your ramp back home is so perfectly dialed, then you get to contest, and there might be all sorts of stuff that you gotta adapt to, and you're not used to that, so it throws you off. Can, can you talk about going up against Bucky and, and Sean and those runs? I mean, they, they had, Sean had the lead before that 94, and, and it was a pretty tight competition. Yeah. I mean, how I, much... mean I, I fell on my first run, but uh, I wasn't happy I fell on my first run, but I was like, if I'm gonna fall, that's the right time to fall, because the score get higher as the contests go, you know, because the, the energy builds up. So um, I was happy I didn't pull that run on the first go, you know. I was almost like, it's almost good I pulled it, like, second. I almost wish I would have pulled it, like, one run later because as it goes, like, you know, they keep, they, the judges get a little bit more excited and the scores, like, get higher and higher. So I was like, I hope it holds up till the end, you know. But obviously I had, like, a better run that I was planning on doing, but Sean fell, so I didn't, I didn't have to do it, so I just had some fun in the last round. And did, Chuck, did you get uh, that feeling that you were, I mean, did you just know you were going to win? Uh, with, with a 94 and the second guy behind me with like a, what was it, 89 or 87? 7.5. Yeah, and like I had well, almost seven points, you know, six and a half points. I was like, I got a pretty good lead there and he, he you know, they're going to have to do a really good run to, to beat that, you know. But that, but, that invincible feeling? No, you? I didn't feel invincible because I, I had a better run. Like, I was walking up the stairs and then I was up there getting ready to do it and then Sean fell so I was like oh all right so I, I'll try some that I wasn't even planning on doing you know that's why I dropped into the 360 flip and some you know but um, I had a backup plan in case Sean would have made that but I'm not even sure that would have beat my run what was your backup plan I mean what you want me to go through like every single trick no the best one huh the best one. What was, what no, no, was no, no, be no, it was basically the same structure as the run I did, but I was gonna like, you know, switch up a few tricks, like a, a different 540 on the first wall, and um, you know, maybe like done a kick flip, a flip to fakie instead of the, the air to fakie before the seven. Yeah, because the announcer seemed to go nuts when you did some switches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, not too many people do that. Like Bob Burnquist is really good at that. And besides him, like you know. Sean doesn't do any switch tricks or, you know, like if it, it, Sean is really impressive to watch because he goes big he spins and he's, he's really visual but then like if you're like a, like a, I guess a diehard skater and you know about all the different technical things that you can do like nolly, switch dance and all that, then like you know, I feel like that's where me and Bucky kind of like, you know, have like an edge where his edge is like amplitude and spin, so but I mean that's why skateboarding is so interesting because we all have different styles and different like you know strength yeah. and, and, and 
you know, we're, we're trying to, it's an art form, it's about being unique, original, and I don't want to like be doing the same tricks that Sean is doing, and I'm hoping that he doesn't want to do the same tricks I'm doing, because, because like, we want to keep it different, and, and, and it would be boring if everyone did the same run, same tricks, and then it'd be like, what, they're all doing the same thing, you know?